10 frequently asked questions on cult to missionaries. What characteristics define a cult? Cults, or more specifically, destructive cults, are characterized by the following differences from mainstream groups. In religious cults, the leader is the central focus of the belief. In mainstream religions, God is the central focus. Cult recruitment includes deception and concealment of identity and requirements of affiliation. Mainstream groups use no deception, and new members are fully aware of the teachings and expectations before they make a commitment. Cults use mind control techniques and forms of hypnosis to indoctrinate followers. Emotional needs are exploited, and people are held psychological hostages through peer pressure, guilt, and fear. Mainstream groups do not resort to unethical means to persuade followers. Leaders of cults make their own rules and laws, which are contrary to the rules and laws of society. They often reframe criminal acts like cheating, lying, stealing, and even murder as the will of God. Mainstream groups value healthy involvement with family, friends, and society. Cults separate and alienate people from family, friends, and society. Mainstream groups value healthy involvement with family, friends, and society. Cults are self-serving, often amassing financial fortunes for the leaders at the expense of the followers. In mainstream groups, leaders serve the people and contribute to the welfare of society in general. Do cult leaders really believe what they preach? We can't know what they really believe, but their acts speak for themselves. Many leaders of religious cults claim to be God's special messenger, prophet, Jesus, the Messiah, or God himself. In contrast, Jews believe that the Messiah will bring about peace for mankind, which is a noble and serious task. On the other hand, one cult leader who claims to be the Messiah goes to Las Vegas and gambles huge sums of the hard-earned money that his followers collect for 10 to 15 hours on street corners. Other self-proclaimed messiahs sexually abuse men, women, and children in their groups. Most cult leaders have made slaves of their followers and caused considerable damage to the minds, bodies, and lives. Families, too, have suffered great harm. What happens to cult members 10 years after they join? A number have left in disillusionment. Most are still in the cults. These days we hear people say that their sons and daughters, and sometimes mothers and fathers, have been in cults 10, 12, and 15 years. Is Jews for Jesus a cult? Most Hebrew Christian groups like Jews for Jesus do not fit the specific definitions of a cult. However, many of them use cult-like tactics in their recruitment. Are the Hebrew Christian groups as big a problem as the cults? Both cults and missionary groups continue to grow at a rapid pace. Thirty years ago, there were a few thousand members of a handful of cults, and not more than a few thousand Jews in missionary groups. It is estimated that more than 20 million people have been involved in cults since the 1970s, and as many as half a million Jews are now involved with missionary groups. How do people join cults and missionary groups? Joining is a gradual process that starts with a personal contact by an appealing, friendly individual. Recruiters look for lonely, depressed, confused, vulnerable people. They offer help, friendship, love, and quick answers to complicated problems. The vulnerable may feel that their needs are being met and come to depend on this new source of support. The one-on-one -on -one relationship expands to an entire group. For a lonely person, instant acceptance by a friendly group of people is very enticing. Are people who join cults weak? Stressful circumstances such as school problems, loss of a romantic relationship, confusion over career goals, financial pressures, 
disillusionment can lead to sudden vulnerability. Needy people are not as discerning as they might ordinarily be and are easy prey for a deceptive, alluring recruiter. Are people who get involved in cults less intelligent than others? On the contrary, cultists are bright, idealistic, caring individuals. They get hooked because they believe they will be doing important work for the betterment of mankind. Nobody joins a cult. They're joining a cause. Intelligent people also have needs, frustrations, and disillusionment. It's more a matter of feelings than intelligence. If people always dealt at an intelligence level, we wouldn't have the divorce rate we have, nor would anyone ever make mistakes. How often do we ignore what we know and act on what we feel? Is there a person that can avoid getting involved in a cult? We hope so. The first and most important safeguard is to realize that anyone can end up in a cult. Monetary crisis situations make people vulnerable. When you acknowledge that it can happen to you, you'll be more aware and less gullible. This is especially significant considering the deceptive, seductive, and extremely persuasive tactics of recruiters. Second, if you're going through a rough time and you're far from home, be especially careful in whom you place your trust to help you. Call home. Let your parents or siblings know that you're having difficulty. Contact a friend. If you're in school, contact the Hillel or a local rabbi. Go to counseling services on or off campus. Cult recruiters are not always just friendly strangers. They can be classmates, people in your dorm, or even professors. If you're asked to go to a lecture or free dinner, don't yield to the pressure or go out of curiosity not knowing the nature of the group. Don't give your name, email address, or phone number. If you're considering accepting their offer, take their number and tell them that you'll be in touch after you check them out. Then check them out with your local Jewish community, a local rabbi, or call the Jews for Judaism office. If the recruiter pressures you, walk away. Cult recruiters count on your good manners to listen politely, which gives them the opportunity to persuade you. Those are things we should not do. Can you tell us what we should do? Care about yourself as a person and as a Jew. Caring about yourself as a person means that you will not allow anyone to take advantage of you, that you will not be victimized, that you will not be compromised. Caring about yourself as a Jew means that you will accept being part of the continuity of your people, that you will know what Judaism stands for and what it means to you. Thanks for listening.